Welcome to Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, coming to you from the rolling hills of Big Spring Valley in beautiful Alabama. Katherine Lang offers words of encouragement and hope to help grow up lives boldly pursuing peace and joy. Katherine seeks out the rainbows of life while sharing her lollipops of encouragement along her journey. Here on Growing Hope, she features words to help hope and grow courage, all while challenging herself and listeners to radical choices and bold purpose. This is Growing Hope with Katherine Lang, where we are growing hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. And now, here's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello there and welcome to Growing Hope Radio. I am Katherine Lang and I am your proud Rainbows and Lollipops host. But I confess that I have considered dropping the Rainbows and Lollipops part (laughs) because sometimes people look at me weird when I shared that idea and that status. Not everyone gets the whole Rainbows and Lollipops ideal. They often accuse me of being delusional or living in a fantasy world or just not getting it. And quite honestly, there are days when I feel like it's a delusion or an act. I mean, how can I say that I'm a Rainbows and Lollipops host? Things aren't going the way I want them to right now. At least, they're not going as fast as I want them to. Maybe a mishap or mistake or even a situation outside my immediate sphere of control causes a shift and a shuffle that leaves me dangling right over the edge of despair. So I get it. I get that things are messed up in this world, and I get that this messed up world tries to spill over and splash up on our individual journeys. But you know what? I will continue to declare that I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because this world is messed up and because this world is determined to push me down and because they say that it's not right anyway. You know, just the mere idea of being the Rainbows and Lollipops host is enough encouragement for my own journey to keep me from tumbling into despair. And I can slowly find the energy and the focus to back my way away from the edge. Now today I'm visiting with my good friend Bridget Hester of the Hubble Foundation. And we're sharing thoughts on encouragement and how encouragement can be different, uh, be the difference between making it or becoming broken. And we're also talking about the importance of learning and the power of learning. And the fact that you, if you aren't learning, then you're dying. But first, it's time for He Said, She Said, the part of the show where I bring on my husband to discuss the topic of the day. Now it's time for He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. He Said, She Said. Break it down. Pick one. This week's topic is organized religion. (laughs) You start, since I picked. All right, what would you like to talk about on organized religion? What is it, and how is it beneficial or hurtful? Mm. It can be both. We talked about it in Sunday school last week, and part of it was... I said in the Methodist Church that Wesley didn't want the Methodist Church, for example, to even become a uh, denomination because once it becomes organized, people have particular beliefs within that organization, which isn't necessarily what God had intended in the first place because we get back to the rules are more important than the relationship with God. Relationship. So... Do you think that in today's day, in today's technological age, where you can get the word through scripture, why do people need organized religion? Well, wherever two or more meet, and unfortunately, I don't think most people want to be the person in charge. (laughs) 
So they let somebody else do that, and they join a, a particular church, denomination, etc. Uh, it is unfortunate, though, because nobody is worthy, but... Somebody's, people... somebody's got to do it. <laughs> well, people, people are called to do a particular job, right. and unfortunately, within... A lot of places, not just organized religion, but anything that's organized like that. The expectation is that you're going to be the place where the buck drops if you're in charge. And you have to try to get the people that work under you to be able to do their own jobs, and you have to do some of theirs. I understand that, but getting back to organized religion, my best example is for a pastor. A pastor has a particular job. Unfortunately, the expectation is the pastor is supposed to do everything, especially <laughs> in a small church. And a small church is deemed uh, under 100 people in the church. So most of the pastors are expected to do every single job, and that's not what they're called to do. They're called to be the pastor. They're called to lead the church. They're called to help bring people in. And under the growth of their relationship with Christ and in God and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through them, others don't step up. And I think that that's ultimately the issue that I have seen with organized religion and with what people outside of the mainstream churches have against organized religion is that it is no longer what was being developed in the New Testament church. The New Testament church was about people coming together to support one another and encourage one another and fellowship with one another. It was not about coming to learn the word because you were expected to be learning the word. You were expected to be studying. You were expected to be growing that personal, intimate relationship with Christ on, on your, your own. <laughs> with your family, with your neighbors. And and we have become dependent on organized religion to feed us. So we're, we have a tendency to get caught in the milk and not in not eating the steak. We choose... To become dependent on the organized religion. And whatever the denomination is, whatever the religion is, organized religion can become a handicap and a hindrance to the personal relationship that we are called to have. Right. And that's why I said what Wesley said, and that's why Wesley said what he said in the first place, is he knew that it could undo was attempting to do in the first place so it's supposed to be about relationship but we have to choose to make the choice to invest in that relationship first with god and then with others correct what do you say share your thoughts opinions or questions by emailing radio at katherinelang.com and include he said she said in the subject line you know, it all comes back to relationships. That's what we are designed for, and that's what we are supposed to do. First, we're designed to grow up a relationship with God, and it is in that relationship with God and with that relationship to God that becomes our foundation of all the other relationships in our lives. Yes, organized religion can be a great tool for growing up the relationships that will shore up that Christian walk. But like anything in life, it can also become a crutch that we depend on. Organized religion can be the support that we need in the beginning of our journey. It can provide the comfort we need when we're walking out life in this hectic world. It can be a safe haven when we're going through a tough time or we're struggling. But organized religion can also become a place where we hide from the world. Although we are not supposed to be of this world or guided by this world, we do have to be in the world in order to be a light for the world. 
The key to organized religion is a balance centered on God and His Word. Growing Hope Radio is going to take a quick break, but when we come back, I will be chatting with Bridget Hester of the Hubble Foundation, and also we will be sharing some thoughts and ideas on encouragement and planning. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these brief messages. I have a secret. Actually, I have eight secrets, and I'm going to share them with you. Hi, I'm Catherine Lang, and I am the Husband Whisperer. I've learned the secrets for having the perfect spouse. The Husband Whisperer by Catherine C. Lang. Available at most online bookstores, or you can purchase your copy by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books. This is Mason Hawks of the United Earth Central Corps. I've encountered an unidentified spacecraft that has refused to answer all attempts to communicate. It has reacted in a hostile manner and launched several combat fighters to engage me. My ship is damaged and I'm not going to make it, so I've done a memory scan and embedded it in this transmission. Please... I'm not sure how I got here or even where here is. Can we boost the signal? I woke up in the wreckage of a crashed shuttle. Is anyone receiving this? Can anyone out there hear me? The family satellite has been destroyed. My signal's too weak. If you can hear this, you've got to warn Earth. We are being invaded. There's no hope of warning Earth in time. The aliens that shot down my shuttlecraft plan to take over UCC territory. Is the the station? I'm stranded on this primitive backwater planet and trapped in some kind of experimental biosuit. We are being attacked by some sort of... too many of them. Some sort of shape-changing alien beings. If you are receiving this, please relay the warning to Earth. Stars of the Connery by S.P. Dorning. Ask for it at your local bookstore or order it on Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble today. Audio produced by Spiritblade.net. Christian sci-fi and fantasy. Unsterilized, unsafe, unleashed. Welcome back to Growing Hope Radio. Today, I will be chatting with Bridget Hester, founder of the Hubble Foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports the spouses and children of tower climbers that died on the job. And Bridget began this foundation after her own husband was killed on the job. She has an inspiring story, but really it is her ability to reach out and encourage and inspire other people that motivated me to take the time to sit down and chat with her. I talk to myself. Yes. Out loud. I mean, I even do it in the car and thank God there's Bluetooth because if I had tried that 10 years ago... People would have had me put in a home. But I'll have a conversation with myself, and I'll just have my phone, like, where people can see it if they drive by, so they think I'm talking on the phone and I'm not really having a conversation <laughs> with myself. But if you talk stuff out loud, like, if you got to have a conversation with somebody, yeah. and you talk and you say it out loud, you'll catch stuff. Like, oh, that didn't come off the way I intended it. Oh, that sounded bad. Or... But you have a lot to say. I don't feel like it half the time. Right now I'm so tired I can't see straight. You know, just but from that's something in it of itself is how do I continue to encourage people when I'm so tired I can't see straight? How do I find the strength to help you? It's called naps. What you what you say to yourself becomes your reality. That makes sense. And so you have to be aware of what you're saying to yourself and that's why I think speaking out loud mm-hmm. is so valuable. As long as you're speaking that positive Right, you know, affirmations. Well, because I'm teaching psychology of adjustment this quarter, which is basically coping skills. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, essentially through the entire thing. And you should have seen their faces when I said to journal. Everybody went oh, and rolled their eyes. I'm like, fine, whatever. I mean, you don't have to have extra credit or nothing for attempting it, but whatever. And they're like, what do you mean extra credit? I'm like, you've got to journal for two straight weeks. You know, because some of it sounds like new agey and stupid and I mean I even cringe sometimes when I'm teaching lectures because I'm like oh for the love you know I'm sitting here going I know you guys are thinking the same thing that my face is saying right now say it write it down and then say it to yourself every day day. we're all individuals and everybody's comforted by different things and everybody Mm -hmm. 
um, finds their inspiration in different things, but the key is reaching out. Yeah. I was reading uh, Napoleon Hill's quote today, and it said, if you find what you were uniquely designed to do, you will never suffer in your work or something like that. You'll, yeah. never, you'll never actually work, if you think about it. It doesn't feel like work. You know, you're doing what it's kind of like you stumbling into. You, you didn't sit there and go, you know what I want to do is I want to run a foundation. That's I didn't even want to do research. <laughs> the only reason I got a degree in research was because I moved over here because I was going to get married to Johns, and they didn't have the program for forensic psychology I wanted, but I was bored out of my mind. I wanted to go to school, and I was like, eh, okay, fine research. Who knew I'd like it, much less end up using it. I didn't know. He did. I yeah. didn't. Yeah. You know, I mean, I didn't know that I was going to, I mean, I wasn't going to go into the Ph.D. program, but I was sitting in the recliner doing like, <laughs> what am I going to do? And, and Johns just looked over at me and goes, do you want to go sign up for the Ph.D. program? I'm like, nope, can't afford it. I'm good. And he's like, oh, dear God, please go sign up for the Ph.D. program. So you, did, you can't, that goes back to what we were talking at the very beginning, you can't let other things, you can't let the circumstances, other people, situation, mm -hmm. drive the truck. <laughs> right. And, and then I end up using it like I'm using it, yeah. and I'm just like, that's depressing in a way, because it's kind of like, crap, did I mean, you know. Well, no, because I fully believe that even if it hadn't worked out the way it worked out, mm -hmm. that you would have still utilized it. God yeah. would have opened another door. Yeah, I'd that be if, teaching full-time or, or... Or even found another foundation. and didn't. Or stumbled into the foundation. Anyway. Anyway, um, that the enemy doesn't... The in, the enemy's wins are not required for our win to happen. That's true. That's true. Ooh, that's good. And and so okay. often people say, if I hadn't gone through this, then I never could have. And I'm like, you that's know, that's not true. That's not scriptural. You know, otherwise Jesus could never have done what Jesus did for all of us. He could never have comforted the widow and healed the and and related to the the mm -hmm. woman that had you know what six husbands Ugh. um if you think about what encourages somebody and you are willing to do it now they're doing it with an expectation of return <laughs> occasionally but but if you do stuff without expectation of return and that's where you're so good at doing that you're just giving and encouraging and supporting and loving because you give and support and encourage and love and it builds up in you when you mm -hmm. get to do it but it builds up in them and it's just kind of a never-ending cycle and if you told me seven eight years ago that I would enjoy quote-unquote serving other people <laughs> told you you were stoned because you you had a different perception of what serving yeah was completely i mean it's like they're trying to our school the strayer university folks you know if you look up the dictionary definition of happiness it hones in on money yeah and wealth and nine out of ten americans when you ask them what does it mean it does not have anything to do with money so they've actually started a petition to have the dictionary expand the definition <laughs> And I mean, well, it's, it's just kind of, quit calling it. You're not. It's not happiness. You're not trying to seek happiness. You're trying to seek joy, and that's where the difference is. Is we're not trying to be happy. We're trying to be joy filled. And you don't. You don't get joy from. I, it's like I told the students since I'm teaching the um, adjustment class. You know, I said happiness is situational. It's circumstance based. Right. I said joy is something that you get from. You know, and I have to be careful because I teach in a secular school. Right, right. You know, but I mean, most of the time, most of my students are Christian anyway, so they just throw it's it out there. It's an internal. Oh, they throw it out there. Like, you get that from Jesus. I'm like, there you go, baby. I'm going to say it, but if you want to, that's fine. Um, you know. Check. And they. Bring me chocolate. You're good. Mm -hmm, and they get it. <laughs> and the students get it. And it's like, you're expecting something to happen to make you happy. I said, that's not going to work. I said, that's what the whole adjustment class is about, is right. you have to do. I said, oh, y'all look so entertained and excited about introspect, about turning the microscope on yourself. I said, yeah, you better do it. Yeah. I said, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. And don't be coming to me in three classes all stressed out because you didn't do a thing I told you to do. I'll even write it down for you. Right here. <laughs> and that's what, that's what the class that I'm taking. I, I, I did, I took my last breadcrumbs and I invested in one of these uh, online classes, not because I think he has the magic Mm -hmm. button um, 
he he warned it was going to be work. Um, I I don't think he warned it enough. <laughs> <laughs> Because even though I've done a lot of what he's saying, I'm going back and I'm doing it again. Because if you think you know everything, you're already in trouble. Oh, yeah. And even if you think you know everything about what you know, you're You're already in trouble. trouble. So I am taking everything he said. I'm learning from everything he said. I'm doing all the exercises that he suggested. Don't sound too thrilled about that. Oh, my Lord. Some of it I'm like, really? Seriously? I've already done this 150 times. I have to do it again. So I'm doing it again. And it, he guarantees that if you put the work in, you'll have your success. Yeah. But that's where most of us stumble. Is we, we want the success without putting in the work. Yeah. And that's what I think society has taught people is that well, you can... Is an over and t- you look at The Voice and you look at um, the all the reality TV shows where people oh, got their Lord. fame and fortune from doing nothing. But what people don't understand is even those people that got their fame and fortune and kept it. Yeah. Those people are putting in some serious work. Oh yeah. They didn't just stumble into Big Brother and become rich and famous. Right. They took that opportunity and and, and, and grew it's like it. The Kardashians, God love them. Really? I'm like, why are they even famous? You know, but once they got famous, you know, they've got a clothesline or a product line and they work to well, everybody is wired to learn. That's where we that's where we It's can, just the environment's different for we, people. We we just need to understand that the learning process is if you're not learning, you're dying. Everybody has something to offer. Oh, that's true. And if you try to find the positives and what people have to offer, instead of focusing and honing in on the negatives, yeah. then even the people that drive you a little bit nuts, drive you a little less nuts. nuts. Yeah. And but, then I've got to... everybody can learn. Yeah. And it may not be your so-called environment, but I think that's just an excuse that people have put on themselves. Yeah. That if you make the choice to learn, you can learn in whatever environment that you are in. And my perfect example, I went to a conference, and I went out, the guy that put up the conference stopped me. He said, what what are you going to hear next? And I said, I'm going to hear Jen's talk. And he went, no, it's the same one she gave a few months ago that you were at. And I said, well, if I don't learn something new, it's not her problem. Huh. Okay. Because yeah. you can, it's kind of like saying, okay, I've read the Bible. I never have to read it again. Oh, whatever. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a living, breathing thing. That's, yeah. But if you go into something willing to learn and gain from it, it then doesn't matter how many times you've heard it, you'll get something out of exactly. it. Exactly. And so that's what people have to look at learning. It doesn't matter if it's sitting at a desk. And you're not used to that. Mm-hmm. It is the learning process. Am I willing to learn from you? And I think we get, as a society, when I say we, we're too impatient. We expect it oh, right yeah. then, right now. And if, and if so it we doesn't want the easy come, button. it's called discipline. It's called time management. No. But that's what, that's what people, it's an excuse. Any excuse. Any excuse. Any excuse. And I was doing mm-hmm. that. That's wh- that's where I was before the big crash. Yeah, I was I was reviewing my my year because I have a whiteboard of world domination. There you go. And it's got my goal at the top. It's got my it's founded. It's my foundation is my focus word for the year, and and then all the things that I'm going to do to reach oh, my cool. goal. And and so I'm looking at my whiteboard of world domination, going, okay, what did what worked, what didn't work, mm-hmm. and why didn't it work? And I realized because I didn't work. <laughs> So my foundation word, my first time was focus. My second time was, uh, my second year was consistent. And this year it was diligent. And I realized. Yeah, I wasn't diligent this year. Yeah, I know. That's what I was. And so I was changing my, and I was going to be diligent. And literally, I'm not exaggerating. It was the day that I was doing this that the that the hackers hit. And it was kind of like, oh, see, that's just cold. That's just cold hearted. You just kind of look at God and go, really? How hard are you laughing at me? How can I be diligent when I can't (laughs) access anything? And and so I had to change my perception of what it meant to be diligent in these activities and and refocus and repurpose and reactivate. And it was interesting to to do that and and not be stressed. I think if I had to, if had I chosen a word for this year, can I pick a word in retrospect? Sure. Okay. In retrospect. But now just don't take your next year's word. No, it would probably be maintenance. Maintenance. Like 
yeah. knowing when to take it yeah. and, and stop for a couple days. Because like the past two weeks, first it was my back was completely thrown out. And I literally, I literally looked like when I got, I walked like this for three days. And I've got to go back to the chiropractor today, but my lower back is so unstable that it slips out a lot. And so, but, and then so I was down then. Yeah. Then I got going, and then before that I had been sick. And so it was, I was taken, and I'm like, you know, God bless me to work from home, and I'm not getting anything done. He's going to take it away from me. Yeah. If I don't, you know, but then oh, I. And then you're starting to panic, and you're and like, like <laughs> yeah. You know, but the thing is, is the maintenance part is knowing when to stop it for a second yeah and it's okay to sit there and binge on tv for a day it to, to to decompress as or, long as you recognize it's a temporary yeah you don't just stay gonna help me pick my your pick my word for 2000 well what you have to do here's what i did um because i already got my word and i'm already working on my whiteboard of world domination for uh, next year and what it is is i've got my big goal Okay. So this is my big goal, you know, reaching, I think it's a, reaching 100,000 people a day. Holy crap. You know, you, I don't think small. And, <laughs> but then I break it down into segments, work, um, health, uh, others. Take a picture of your whiteboard and send it to me. I will, I will. It's, it's on my, it should be on my website. If not, I talk about it all the time because when I started breaking it down, it was so much easier because I was like, okay. And then, because I'm a... I want to know every day what am I tackling on this whiteboard. Oh, you like lists? Um, I am a. I love lists. Oh yeah. So Good I have so I have my whiteboard of world domination, but I also have my focus folder, and I literally can take my world with me anywhere I go. I should have brought it. Um, if I'd known you were a list person, I brought it, because within my folder is a daily schedule that mm -hmm. I can check off my to do. I print it off. I print off my to do list so I can check it off. I also have a weekly. Um, list that shows my what my schedule should be and whether or not I'm accomplishing what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And I have a monthly so I can see what am I supposed to be doing, what can I add, what can I do different. And then I have my learning that I'm doing to okay. grow whatever. So like right now that writing class, that blog class is in there. Mm -hmm. um, if I sit in on a class or a webinar and I take notes, I put it in my learning. I got a folder with the in my instead of just having the regular. Um, uh, pads. Mm -hmm. I have the ones with holes in them. You have to pay extra for those, but then you can actually tear them out and put them somewhere as opposed yeah. to having 1,600 pads wandering around with you. Yeah. And it keeps up with my blog posts, and, and, and I can see how I'm utilizing and what the... Okay. And so everything's right there together, and I don't have any excuse now for if, if I'm not getting um, the response I want, then I can look back at my schedule and go, why? Yeah, what did I overload with? What, what did I not do? What did, what did I not I... do? And what's not working? If it's if I'm doing it consistently and it's not working, why am I still doing it? Yeah. It was such a delight sitting with Bridget and enjoying the coffee time with her. And sharing. Sharing is always good in that kind of situation. I especially liked her idea of retroactive focus word, and I'm thinking about making it a review word for my purposes. What did my year look like? And maybe I'll write that down the side of the whiteboard of world domination so that I can be reminded of my journey. You can learn more about Bridget and the Hubble Foundation by visiting www.hubblefoundation.org. That's H-U-B-B-L-E-F-O-N. D-A-T-I-O-N dot O-R-G. Bridget has also written a book about her loss and her courage to overcome the loss in the book God Wink on the Wings of uh, Butterflies. It's available on Amazon.com and all the proceeds from the sale of the book go directly to the Hubble Foundation. You know, we all need encouragement and we all need to find our own way to be encouraged and to be an encouragement. Sometimes all it takes is a cup of coffee with a friend and sometimes it takes more focus and determination. Let me know how I can be an encouragement to you today. Just email me over at radio at katherinelang.com. Now, Growing Hope Radio is going to take a quick break, but when we return, I'm going to be sharing with you more thoughts on how I came up with my whiteboard of world domination and also the details that it covers. Growing Hope Radio will be back after these brief messages. Christian Women Affiliate is a free community for Christian women who seek to be all that God has called them to be. 
with many affordable services including radio and webinar hosting and an outstanding review crew. You have many exciting opportunities for promoting your message. Join Christian Women Affiliate today and make quality connections that lead to mentoring and resources that complement your calling and impact our world. Visit ChristianWomenAffiliate.com today. Got hope? Growing Hope seeks to instill the courage that your heart needs to live out the bold life grounded in hope. The monthly newsletter offers tips, inspirational stories, and scriptures to help grow up hearts that are open to pursue the extraordinary. Visit KatherineLang.com slash promotion and sign up and receive a moment of hope. The Growing Hope Monthly Newsletter. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Hello there and welcome back to Growing Hope Radio where today we will begin laying out a plan that will lead to our desired success. Now all the actions in the world will not get me to where I want to go if I don't know where I'm going (laughs) and if I don't even know where I want to go. On the flip side, all of the destinations in the world will not get me there if I don't have the actions that move me in that direction. Planning and pursuing my success is a two-fold project. First, I have to define my destination. And second, I have to put together the actionable steps that I'm going to take to get there. And I have every intention of working through this process with you because I had a plan for 2015 and I had written out this awesome design for 2015 and I had it founded and blocked off and perfected in so many different ways. I had a plan, but I didn't get there. (laughs) So, I know that I have something I have to tweak or twist or change in order to get me to where I want to be. Now, several years ago, and I mean like a long several years ago, my friends and I were driving back from Pensacola, Florida, and we were headed to Gulf Shores, Alabama. We'd been out to dinner in in Pensacola, and we were going back to a condo. I had a map. So that kind of gives you an idea of how many several years ago it was. And from the map, we determined that we could take a shortcut from the restaurant back to the condo if we followed a couple of back roads. Now, I'm from a small town in Alabama. Back roads are very common travel uh, opportunities for me, especially, you know, those long several years ago. And we did great. We were having a fun time. We were joking and laughing and enjoying the the different roads that was kind of off the beaten path. And one of us noticed a sign that said, pavement ends ahead. Now, again, growing up in small town Alabama, back in those days, it was not uncommon for dirt roads to be part of the normal process. We did slow down because dirt and pavement are very different mediums and we didn't want to run off the road. But it was a good thing we slowed down because that particular sign may have said pavement ends, but what it really meant was that the road ended right there into a bay of water. The irony of the whole thing was that we could see the condo. We were within spinning distance of the condo. So the map showed that the roads connected, but they didn't actually connect. We were just close enough (laughs) so that it looked like it on the map. When I look back on the plan that I had for 2015, I kind of feel like this has happened to me again. That my map said it would take me to the destination, but there was a bay in between where I am and where I want to be. And I wasn't in the vehicle that I needed to cross over that bay. I was close just not quite there. And I want to be right there. I had another similar experience, I guess you could say. It involved a weight release program because it was not a weight loss program. The goal was to change your life so that you never picked up the weight again. And it was not a food control program because there was no counting calories and there was no cutting fat or anything like that. The goal was to change the focus from food to God. And every day, 
While I was in this program, I invested in the words that helped me look at food as fuel and not as a crutch or a filler. And every day, I invested in talking with God about what I was eating and how I was eating. By the end of the 12-week program, I had lost 30 pounds. And the real kicker was that I had given up diet drinks completely and gone to real sodas if I drank sodas. I gave up all low-calorie foods, including low-fat milk and things like that. I had started using real butter in all of my cooking, and we were having desserts regularly in the in our meal plans with me and the because I had kids. Everything I was doing seemed counter to the understanding of what was supposed to work, but I changed my focus, and I made the new focus my new habit, and that was what made the difference. I stopped worrying about what they said, and I began talking to God about what He wanted. Now, here's a warning for you. I didn't always like what God had to say about it. (laughs) I mean, sometimes I was just downright defiant with Him. But in the end, when I put my trust and my focus on Him, then His way made the difference. So I'm combining these two concepts for my 2016 plan for the upcoming year. And I'm having a complete and close-up map, but also shifting my focus so that it's not all about me, it's all about God. The first step in this plan is to define the big picture. What am I trying to accomplish and why am I trying to accomplish it? In other words, I want to dream the impossible dream. You need to see the big picture destination and it should be so far out there that it almost seems impossible. The second step that I'm taking is to determine the elements of that big picture. What makes up the big picture? All big pictures are made up of smaller elements. The third is to lay out the smaller goals within each of these elements. I need to be in a position that will allow me to measure what it is I'm doing, what it is I'm attempting to do, and what it is that I'm do, uh, what is working and what isn't working. So I have to be able to have these elements in smaller increments. The fourth step is to imagine individual steps that will move me towards the goals in a daily and practical way. Remember, the reason I was successful with the weight um, uh, removal release program was that I was consistent and daily. And finally, the fifth step is to develop a schedule that will get me there. Now, Growing Hope's going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to dig in deeper and figure out how we can make a plan for our breakthrough. This is the Growing Hope Review. Each week, I will share with you one of my favorite Bible studies, books, or movies, and I will tell you why I was moved to share. Although I know that we each get something different out of the things we encounter, I also know that when we are moved by words, then others are likely to be moved as well. This week's review is for The Little Prince, one of my all-time favorite books. Now, I was going to tell you the name of the author, but he's French, and I don't speak French. And even when I went to the internet to figure out how to pronounce his name, I knew I didn't stand a chance. The good news is that The Little Prince, although originally written in French, has been translated to English. I first met The Little Prince when I was in high school. The wisdom from the book provided me with the comfort I needed when I was grieving over a lost friend. I carried that copy with me to college, where the soft voice of the little prince reminded me that I was responsible for the people that I love. I still have the hard copy of that book, but I've also added to my collection the Kindle version. Now I have the words of the little prince with me wherever I go. Although the truth is, I've read the book so many times that his words really are always with me. I've read the book to my kids. I've written articles about the book. I've even quoted the book so many times that his words feel like my own. The Little Prince is a short book, around 96 pages. But each time I've read through the book, I've learned something new about my journey through the journey of The Little Prince. If you've never read The Little Prince, now is the time. It's being adapted to an animated movie coming out this holiday season, and I've seen the trailer. It made me cry. But before you see the movie, you need to meet the little prince for yourself. 
This was the Growing Hope Review. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by attribution. The sound of the door unlocking made her heart speed up. Her reasonable mind told her there was nothing on the other side, but reason had lost its argument long ago. It was time to face the past, no matter how much she wanted to run. Run, the pulse-quickening first novel in the Big Spring series from Catherine C. Lang. Don't look back. Get it today in paperback or ebook at Amazon.com or CatherineLang.com. Run. R&D Computer Solutions, serving all your computer needs. We provide low-cost hosting options, complete website development, and online troubleshooting service. No matter what your needs, the staff at R&D Computer Solutions will be there to help you find the answer. Visit www.rdcss.com to learn more about R&D Computer Services, a family-owned and Christian-run quality computer business. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to the plan-making, purpose-pursuing episode of Growing Hope Radio. I am still Katherine Lang, and I am still boldly standing as your Rainbows and Lollipops host because hope makes this journey possible, and hope makes this journey extraordinary. And I'm determined to journey through it all with hope as my foundation. And I'm doing my part to send hope out to you as well. So if you ever need a little extra encouragement during your week, do not hesitate to let me know. Contact me on social media or you can sign up for my newsletter, Reflections and Hope, that comes out each Sunday. Or you can just stop by the website, www.katherinelang.com. There's a contact form there. Because everything I post does have an element of hope, even if it's only blesses you. So if you need that extra oomph, please let me know. Now, before the break, I was talking about making a plan for the new year, and I shared that my plan for the past year was good, but it just didn't quite get me to the destination. And I shared how a program I participated in a few years back got me to where I wanted to go as long as I kept my focus on God and followed His directions. Now, albeit sometimes it was with a kicking up dust and throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum, But I got there. (laughs) And I shared the five steps that would help me make a plan that combines these two thought processes. The the um, The first step is to plan a big picture, to define a big picture, a big uh, goal. The second step is to determine the elements of that big picture, what makes it up. The third step is to lay out the smaller goals within each of these elements. The fourth step is to imagine individual steps that are going to move me towards the goals in a daily and practical way. And the fifth step is to develop a schedule that will make a way for each of these parts to become a reality. The simple step is often the one we neglect. The simplest one and the first one. And that's to have a plan. If I want to get someplace, then I need to know where that place is going to be. (laughs) Otherwise, I'm just doing a lot of things without really knowing if the things are moving me closer. So here's my question for you and for myself. What do you want to do or what do you want to be or what do you want to have in the next five or ten years or in the next year? See, for me, the big goal is to reach 100,000 people each day. That's my dream. And I want to do it not because of me, but I really desire to be in a position to lift up and encourage as many people as I can come in contact with. So 100,000 people is my goal. And I know it's a big dream goal because when I share it with others, they go, whoa. (laughs) That's usually a good indication that you have a big dream goal. What big dream do you have? Write it down. And if you don't have one right now, start marinating over that and thinking about that until you come up with one. The next thing that I need to do is I need to see what elements are involved in that big dream. For me, it includes my radio show, the webinars that I do, blog posts, email lists, live presentations, and uh, seminars that I present, guest posts, or attributed uh, freelance work, whatever it is. That I, that I know combines together to help me reach that 100,000 people. I have other things that I want to accomplish, but 
for now, I'm focusing on this big dream goal and everything that is required to get me there. That's my focus. Everything else is going to be in a separate column. I have other goals that I want to attend to, such as my health and getting my health where I want it to be and getting my home where I want it to be and getting my garden where I want it to be. But right now, I'm focusing on my big dream goal. The third step is to break down each individual element into to smaller pieces because a journey is always one step at a time and reaching my big goal is no different than any other journey now one of the elements in my big dream goal is my email list and my first goal for my email list is a thousand subscribers my second goal is 10,000 subscribers my third goal is 50,000 so I have three little increment goals to reach I know it's going to take big numbers in all of my areas if I'm going to reach my 100,000 people a day. And big numbers can be really scary. But if I break it down into smaller numbers, then the task becomes manageable. And it's far less likely that I'm going to procrastinate in the journey. The fourth step tackles the individual goals. What will it take me to get to 100, I mean, to 1,000 subscribers? What am I able to invest and willing to invest to get there? I'm going to have to sacrifice one thing in order to have another thing. The best laid plan will include daily actionable steps. And ultimately, if I want to get there, then I will not only be willing to take action daily, but I will be eager to take action daily. So what will it take to get there? Keeping my email list as the example, I'm going to personally ask two people every day if they're interested in signing up for my email list. I'm going to invest 15 minutes a day reworking or building a resource page to be connected to my email list. And I'm going to daily work on, for 15 minutes, 15 is my magic number, my newsletter so that I can present something that's valuable to you and worth and worth your time in not only reading it but in sharing it and the final step is to make a time and place for all these things that I've put together see I had a schedule set up but then life intervened (laughs) and my schedule had to be adjusted to accommodate all the changes but I know that if I want to accomplish things, then I need to have a dedicated, focused plan with my time. I know me well enough that if it's not focused, then I'm going to be all over the place. And last year, we had a situation come up and I had to spend just 15 minutes a day working on my writing. But at the end of the month, uh, not 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes an hour working on my writing. But at the end of the month... Even if I only got one 15-minute segment a day, I still ended up with almost 90,000, over 90,000 words completed. So I know that if I combine my big schedule that I had before life intervened and this 15-minute segment idea, then I'll get to where I need to go. The key is not to be so locked into a schedule that you aren't willing to be flexible in what comes from that schedule, if that makes sense. We have to be willing to work with what we have, and we have to be willing to give a little. That's why we're trees. We're giving with what's coming up. Growing Hope Radio has to take another break, but when we come back, we're going to be talking about scriptures and how to found this journey on the Word. Now it's time for the Growing Hope Weekly Scripture Focus. Each week I will be sharing a favorite Bible verse that has jumped out at me or that has been on my mind. I will challenge you to memorize the verse and to watch how God is working that verse in your life. By putting the Word of God in our hearts and in our minds with consistency, those words will grow fruit and then bloom out through the things we speak and the actions we take. This week's verse comes from Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10. Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falls, for he has not another to help him up. We need each other, because we are stronger together. 
That's why it's so important to make time for relationships. When I have a foundation of relationships holding me up, I have people around me that will lift me up, grow me up, and sometimes just pick me up and carry me. We are designed for relationships, so we naturally desire relationships, but we still have to make them a priority if we're going to see those foundational relationships grow up in our lives and for our lives. Put the words from Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 to work in your life. This has been your weekly scripture focus from Growing Hope. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. There will always be an excuse. There will always be a reason not to keep going. There will always be something that tries to hinder my journey. In truth, the only thing that gets in the way of the journey looks back at me from the mirror every day. I am the only person, the only thing, that can hinder my success. Place and Purpose is a book that offers my own experiences with discovering that unique path and uncovering the truth that they don't hold the answers to my journey. I break it down to four simple questions. Why, what, how, and when. When you answer these questions for yourself, then you will be closer to that unique place designed just for you. Here are some of the things that are being shared about place and purpose. Catherine shares many ways that you can get closer to God and begin to identify that missing part of your life. Place and Purpose offers practical tips for digging into a personal relationship with God so that I can recognize His purpose for my life. Catherine Lang has filled this book with wonderful advice for beginners, but also practical advice for the seasoned believer. Get your copy of Place and Purpose by visiting www.catherinelang.com slash books and begin to answer the why, what, how, and when of your journey. The music for this production was created by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and is licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution. Welcome back to the final installment of this week's Growing Hope Radio. I am still Catherine Lang, your faithful and faith-filled Rainbows and Lollipops host, And you can learn more about me, about the choices that I made to be positive, and about my encouragement journey by visiting www.catherinelang.com. Now, before the break, I shared with you the five steps I'm implementing to, to plan my breakthrough. See, I have gotten so close over the last year, and I felt like I was just right there. But I didn't quite make it. But this year... I'm combining all the positive results from my past experiences, I'm tweaking the almosts that I experienced, and I'm expecting amazing and overwhelming results because of it. And it starts with the five steps. Remember, the first step is the plan. It has to be a big picture, almost impossible dream, the impossible dream kind of plan. The second step is to take that big picture and see all the different elements of the big picture. What makes it up? The third step is to lay out smaller goals within each of those elements that make up that big picture. The fourth is to imagine the the individual steps that are required for each of those breakdowns. And finally, the fifth is to create a schedule that will allow implementation of all of these different steps. Five steps will bring me closer to understanding where I am going, but these steps will also help me find the practical ways that will get me there. See, it takes both. It takes a dream and it takes the action. Know where I'm going, know why I'm going, know how to get there, and take the steps necessary to make it happen. But all of this only becomes possible when I have God and His Word And I'm pursuing his will. All of these are my foundation. Luke 14, 28 through 33 is where Jesus kind of covers the importance of making a plan. He says, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all those who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to encounter another king in war 
will not sit down first and deliberate whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who is coming against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. In other words, Jesus is saying, know what you're getting into before you go getting into it. <laughs> In Proverbs 21, 5, it says, it says it this way, the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. I have a tendency to get excited. <laughs> I know that probably shocks you. But when I encounter something that really lights my fire, I jump in with both feet. And that's not so bad when it's a little puddle. But when it turns out to be a great big hole, then I find that I'm in over my head, I'm wet, and I'm miserable. <laughs> So, it's important to count the cost. Make that plan. It seems that I am not the only one that had a whiteboard of world domination. (laughs) Although, I doubt that's that's what they called it. In Habakkuk, it says in verse 2, 2 through 3, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that whoever reads it may run with it. In other words, you got to write it down. We are so forgetful, especially in this day and age when so much is coming at us. Write down your plan so not only you can see it, but everyone around you can see it. I have one of my short-term goals on index cards all throughout the house. And I had one on the television set, so I see it every time I looked at the television. And my youngest son took it off the television, stuck it on my tablet, and now I have a constant reminder of what that goal is. So when you write it down, you make it easier not only for you to remember, but for the people who support you to remind you as well. It's important to have a plan. It's even more important to have a unique plan based on your unique design founded firmly in the Word. I'm only touching on the surface of this plan myself, but I'm going to continue digging into how to make a plan and what that plan should include over on Twitter right now if you're listening live. So just head on over and follow the hashtag Growing Hope, and you can also join in the conversation. The journey to create a plan for breakthrough continues on Tuesday, December 15th, starting at 2 p.m. Central on the Facebook event over at The Catherine C. Lang. Also, I will be going into more depth during the live webinar at 5.30 p.m. later on Tuesday, December 15th. So be sure you head over to www.catherinelang.com and reserve your seat today. It is completely free and it will be live. Thank you so much for joining me today on this journey to create a plan to break through. I am ready for breakthrough. I'm excited about the things that are ahead and I'm excited about the steps I'm taking and planning for getting there. I hope you are as well and I look forward to sharing with you on social media on the website. Head on over there and connect with me now. Let me know what's going on in your life. Let me know how I can help you in this journey. I am here to encourage you. That is my desire and that is my goal. Remember, you can always email me if you have questions, comments, or ideas on today's show or for future shows. Until next week, keep on planning, take some action, and remember to always take time to be blessed. And in all that you're doing and in all that you're attempting, be a blessing. Thanks for joining us this week for Growing Hope with Katherine Lang. Katherine is a leader in encouragement, a networking specialist, and your Hope Smith extraordinaire. To learn more about Growing Hope, visit Katherine's website at www.katherinelang.com. That's www. K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-L-A-N-G dot com. Catherine is also available to speak or teach at your next event. Use the contact form on the website or email Catherine with queries or questions at contactus at Catherine dot com. If you are looking for more hope and inspiration for your week, you can sign up for the Reflections column that mails out each Sunday at www.catherinelang.com 
slash reflections. And be sure to join us back here each week for Growing Hope, where Catherine shares her heart for encouragement and her vision for hope. Until next week, keep watching for that place where your heart is open to pursue the extraordinary.